faced as we are with an incredibly distributed and complex environmental crisis, how can artists help the audience attune itself to a way of perceiving the world that doesn't place the human at the center? My name is Lucia Pietrojusti, I'm a curator with a specific focus on the intersections of art and ecology. Artists, with their capacity to become curious, how can they participate in creating these links with technologies that then allow for more complex responses rather than solutions to the climate crisis? My name is Olafur Eliasson, I'm an artist based in Berlin. As an artist, I work with spaces, I work with immaterial things. I work with atmosphere and the art I make is based on space. I make things that you can be inside. I very often use things that are immaterial, light, temperature, water, things that nature actually also happens to use. So that means I'm very interested in the relationship between human and the world around them. My name is Marina Zerko. I am a new media artist. My practice is divided between what's known as social practice art, which is participatory, socially engaged work, and more art intended to be looked at, such as software animation work. And all of it is focused on issues of the environment and intersections of our mental worldviews and the natural world. I, as an artist, have spent my life of learning about what touches us as people? Like, what are we influenced by? What does it mean to have an opinion? Can we change that opinion? The way we see the world, can we change the world? And when environmental discussion became bigger and bigger, this then suddenly meant that I, I had a toolbox where environment was already there. Art is not out to change the world single-handedly. It's, I think, best when you see something, you experience something, you share that with your friends. I always ask my students to imagine what people will say after they've experienced your work. What will they be thinking? What will they tell their father or their partner or their child that they had just done? Try to really imagine how art can change people one by one. It's not legislative. It's not changing the way capitalism runs per se, but it's trying to plant seeds of consideration in individuals' minds. I use technology in my art quite a lot. You know, I work with experiences and psychology, you could say, but I use it to make my art more accessible. I mean, if you have something to say, technology is a language with which you can say it. Artists, because of the fact that they work at the level of imagination, at the level of myth, artists can really help us redraw those mythologies and those ways of thinking of our human place in the world and our human responsibility. Artists trying you know, a variety of means to engage people in conversations about climate change. Everybody has to make big efforts to find creative ways to engage people. So a lot of my work has to do with questions around how do we understand the climate? Is it just like with our head or is it with our hands when doing something? As I worked with nature and experience, I mean, human and nature, you could say, the question around climate, I was very interested in the crust of the earth, living zone, you could call it that, that tiny little shiver of a sort of space where humans can live inside. The interesting thing is that crust is not really about borders. So as an artist, environmental questions were very sort of straightforward for me. What artists can do today is really to kind of bring us back right into the body, right into the self, and instead of taking scientific data and making it look beautiful, but really bring us back into our body, back into our guts, and let us feel, let us think what it would be like to attune ourselves to a more than human and very complex world. In the next episode, we'll be focusing on some artworks that are right at the intersection of art, the environment, and technology. Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology. Mm -hmm.